right, this week we are looking into the tools a writer must arm himself with um, if he wishes to conquer the process of writing that dreaded first draft and first and final edits, promotional work, uh, book cover design, uh, and everything else that has become an integrated part of the publishing industry over the course of a couple of years. We'll give you some tips on time management and how to work with social media. Um, we'll talk about marketing and we'll talk about the writer's kit uh, that we already discussed on one of our previous industry insights. But before we dive into the meat of today's video, um, we would like you to take some time to hit that like and subscribe button down below. About 54% uh, of all you people watching us right now aren't currently subscribed. And although your viewership is already greatly appreciated by us, if you really like to support Red Ink Riders um, and make sure we keep the content coming, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and don't forget to hit that bell button. This week's Twitter poll asked you what you were most eager to hear about. We gave you three choices. The first choice was author publicity kit, marketing tools, and the third option was the writer's agenda. Now, Twitter has spoken, and the answer that was given most was about the writer's agenda. By the way, did you subscribe? Now's the time to do it. Did you do it? Good, let's continue. Um, obviously, being a writer is something we do alongside our jobs. Now, whether that be a day job or our job as parents, um, it could be, it, it is always alongside something else. A healthy lifestyle, exercise, uh, keeping in touch with our friends, you name what else. Writing is something we do in between, and as much as we would like it to be our actual job, for most of us, it isn't. And that's why it's so important to keep track of your writer's agenda, because that schedule um, encompasses so much more than just the where and when we sit down and do some writing. Lydia, I am pretty sure you can tell us um, a lot more about that. Okay, so yeah, I would agree with you that most people, this is not something that they do as a full-time career. Um, so you really need to probably be a little bit um, stricter with your writer's agenda and maybe plan it out. Have a, a specific planner for when you want to accomplish things. So like if you have a pre-release date, um, you know, you know you need to have this book ready to be published by that date. So, you know, maybe plan your time accordingly, you know, um, a few months to write the first draft and then several months for editing, um, you know, cover design, you know, um, have you hired a, a cover design editor, uh, a graphic designer, I'm sorry. Um, how much time do they need to get you the cover? Um, you need to, in, in the interim, also be um, planning, you know, when are you gonna release the title? When are you going to release a snippet or a teaser? Um, all of these things, you know, you need to plan around in your agenda around your day job, around your job as a parent, around your job, you know, um, just taking care of yourself. But here's the thing that a lot of people forget, and I have the good fortune at this time um, where this is my full-time career um, in addition to editing. So, you know, I plan mine around working with clients. Um, so I do have that luxury of having a little bit more freedom with that. Um, however, whether you're a writer who is writing on the side or this is a full-time career, we completely forget that this is supposed to be a priority too. And what I mean by that is that um, I hear all the time of, I was gonna write, but, I was gonna do this story, but, daily life, but. Yes, it's completely understandable that, you know, you have a child, I have a 10 year old that I'm supposed to feed and a dog that I need to take for a walk and a, you know, a grandmother that I take care of. Um, but I also have this obligation as a writer, as somebody who is bringing these stories to the world and to the readership and saying, you know, this, this is for you. Um, yes. That is an obligation and it should be an integral part of your agenda. Um, it's yeah. so easy to put the story on the back burner and say, I was going to write, but um, how about, you know, I was going to do a jigsaw puzzle, but I wrote mm -hmm. instead. Um, you know, one you know, of the interesting things I, I once heard about this, I, I attended one of the, the Ride Hive Lights uh, editions in one of the previous years. Um, and there was um, one of Ride Hive's uh, like in-house editor, she's called Yanni Chappelle, and she is phenomenal at what she does. And she said, um, and that really opened my eyes, 
if you look at writing as a dream, it will never become more than a dream. If you start at, uh, looking at writing as if it's a job, that's when the magic happens because that's when you sit down and treat it like a job and do what needs to be done. Yeah. I've heard that, yeah, I've heard that from more than one professional. I've heard it from Paula Manier, she's a senior mm -hmm. agent at Telfy yeah. Literary Agencies, and she said, you know, writing, this is your career. You work on it like a goal, not exactly. a career. Yeah. not as green um and i heard it i took a um a workshop uh last weekend with alex dawson from rutgers university he's a creative writing professor there um for the undergraduate program and and he said you know you're not sitting down and you're not trying to do better each time he said don't try just do do you it to, yeah you need to even do yoda it. said this <laughs> yeah and, and he mentioned that you know um the people who are successful in the industry are the people who outlast everybody else so and, and that really was very profound thing to say because you know thinking about all of the times where it was so easy to just give up and you know this is a dream and it's never going to come true and no this is work this is hard work and we have an obligation to ourselves to continue working hard on these goals um i think that it's so easy for us you know if, especially if we're writing as just a hobby to say you know well it's just a hobby for another day no make it a priority make it something that you must do i think as writers we're we're driven to get these stories out of our head so it's already a must do for for the simple reason of we have to get it out on paper yeah, that's what drives frustrations from coming out if we don't write yeah yeah. Uh, yeah have you ever had that feeling when you haven't written in a really long time and you're yeah. like oh something's just not right. i don't feel right in my own skin mm -hmm. i don't you know make your agenda make this a part of your agenda on a day-to-day -day basis because it's a must do um and that is just you know a must do for the essential self of who we are as writers by nature to, yeah. to get stories out some people you know they get their story out on the big screen some people get their story out in, in a song you know creators and artists and writers we, we have these mediums that we use yeah. to get this content out to people so it is so important to remember that it's not just the the pipe dream. It's not no. just you know, wishful thinking. This is how we contribute yeah. to society, to people. This is our um, gift or offering to them. Yeah. So it's what's so funny is that I, I, I just kind of joked about this whole frustrated artist thing, but this is an actual phenomenon like the, the frustrated art, uh, artist is an actual mm -hmm. thing like people have stuff going on in their minds and when they can't get it out they, there is like this internal frustration and it's really hard to describe i've had it many times where i yeah. just sit down and i'm i'm grumpy to my core and i couldn't tell you why or what is wrong but i feel frustrated because i'm not getting out what's in my head so even from that point of view it's important to make sure you do it because otherwise those frustrations are going to take a walk with you yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with this. It's, um, you know, so, so bringing it back to an agenda, writer's agenda, you know, really take a look at what, you know, um, what do you need to be doing um, in that moment? Do you need to be sitting down and writing that draft? Do you need to be editing? And I just had a conversation the other day when I presented my own workshop, The Pandemonium of Panther, Making Madness into a Manuscript. And um, I said, you know, she said, I absolutely hate editing. Um, she's like, you know, as a panster, that is one of the most important, I, actually, I would revise that statement. It is the most important thing a panster can do for their career and for their writing and for their manuscripts is revision, 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 because yeah. the story is so wild when it first comes out on the page, um, you know, we really need to rein it back in and then um, mold it into something that is an acceptable mm -hmm. manuscript. So yeah. coming back to that, I said to her, you know, what if you approached editing with the idea that you are writing more. You are um, going back to this and you're revising the layers and you're saying, you know, I need to like take a look at character development in this this round of revision. So approach it as a new way of writing, as more content, as new writing, um, because that is essentially what you're doing. And you know, you, maybe you have to cut some, maybe you have to add some here. You don't look at it as editing, you look at it as, you know, I'm adding to that creative project. Mm -hmm. So when you're when you're talking about your writing agenda, you know, and, oh, I have to do the editing for the next couple of months or, you know, however long it takes you. I know some people can put a book out a month and some people, you know, it, it takes them a month at a time. There's no judgment. Um, you do you, however that works for you and your agenda. Um, look at it as contributing to this mm -hmm. project. 
to, to, to your schedule, to your agenda. And, um, you know, this is a positive thing. And, you know, maybe that approach mentally will help to, um, to stick to your agenda and say, you know what, I, I do have to add to this development. I have to add to these characters because, yeah. you know, they, they need help. So I, I think that mentality, if you, if you come at it from, you know, this is an entirely new part of the process, mm -hmm. can really stay with. Yeah, and, and, and I think having one of those agendas also helps you um, to, to sort of see the different parts of the process because we, we all know that writing, especially the, the editing part, we can we can get lost in that like entirely. We can we can look at our work for the one billionth time and still see that there is a letter missing or that there is a comma misplaced or and it just keeps on going and going. And when do we ever get out of this editing phase? Well, if you use the, the writer's agenda um, to also schedule the parts where you do something else that is yeah. not writing or editing related, for example, to get your marketing started, for example, to look at the promotions, you see that you are moving forward. So it's it's not only a practical thing, it's also a very uh, psychologically motivating thing to have that agenda because you see what you're working to. You see that, okay, today is the last day I'm gonna work on edits for a while. Um, yep. And next week I'm gonna start doing some graphic work. Uh, or next week I'm gonna have a couple of phone calls with my editors or with my, Whatever, maybe you have a social media manager, or maybe you're one of the lucky few who has that. I don't know, <laughs> um, but it, it will give you perspective on where you are on that line between the first draft and a publication day. So yeah. there there are so many sides to this agenda, and and that's I 100% agree. That's why this is so important. Yeah, absolutely, totally agree.